you mean when I see the biomass that has been thrown away, and why are we even wasting such a useful thing? When I see them thrown away in a landfill, that's a painful scene for me to watch. For me, every biomass is uh, either could be converted into compost, but other uses of biomass could be, you know, you, you, one can make a biochar and a charcoal afterward from all those biomasses. Hello, my name is Netra Chetri. I am an associate professor here at the School for the Future of Innovation in Society at Arizona State University. I am a geographer uh, by my training, um, but I have a long experience of working in Nepal in the area of development. I grew up in a small village. Now it has, of course, been a town called Chitwan Bharatpur. Um, and then I was a trained agriculturist. There are a number of problems that the farmers uh, in Nepal and any other part of the developing world are currently facing. But one of the most important that um, I noticed in my recent trip in Nepal is the uh, massive comeback of invasive species. This particular one is called uh, Mycania. In Nepal, it's also known as a mile a minute. There's a research shows that it grows as, as much as three inch a night during uh, perfect environmental conditions. Oh, that's a very fast growing species. And I'm worried that uh, very soon they will overflow or encroach the agriculture land and that would be another major sort of uh, challenges for small farmers. And that's the reason why uh, a group of students uh, are currently working in this project. They are developing a tool to harvest the bio, um, biomass or vines in this case. And at the same time, they're also developing a pyrolysis techniques to, so that we can a, easily harvest these, this invasive species, then make a biochar easily as well. Slashing and burning fields actually uh, just exacerbates its growth uh, since when they slash and burn the seeds spread and then they take control on the fertile soil. So eradicating the plant isn't realistic and it grows so quickly that we're trying to turn it into something that they can use and incorporate into their lives. One of its only positive qualities is that it's extremely high in biomass. And so this is a really good way to turn that into an advantage. And there are multiple uses for this stuff. So biochar, if you mix it with nutrients, it's a great soil amendment. It'll increase your crop production by sometimes several hundred percent, depending on how bad the earth is before the soil is beforehand. Another use is for water filter medium. This is basically activated charcoal. So when you buy one of those water filters for your sink at home, Pure or something like that, a Brita, the inside is activated charcoal, so this stuff oh. also works that way. You can use any dried biomass, any agricultural waste, sticks and stems and leaves and twigs, whatever burns. Yeah, there you go. There's biochar, and that's that's excellent. That's excellent Perfect quality biochar. biochar. Yeah. Mm -hmm. One key component of the goal is uh, environmental sustainability, right? and clean energy sources. How do we provide clean energy to communities that are underserved? This is one of the ways of achieving clean energy with less effect on the environment. Most of the discussions on innovation are centered on technology, but innovation certainly is a new way of seeing things. It's not always uh, technology based. Uh, innovation can be in terms of uh, you know day-to-day -day activities, something that can improve the quality of life and uh, the livelihoods of people. This is one of the solutions that ASU can offer to solve the real world problem. This demands coming together natural scientists, social scientists, engineers, students and faculty as well as the community coming together engaging so this is this also exemplifies number of our design imperatives but one most important one is the global engagement